Next guest lost her mother to ovarian cancer in 2009. That loss inspired Renzi Sin to establish a foundation honoring her mother's memory. Overcome operates by simple philosophy of support, love, and the celebration of life, and has just reached its fifth anniversary. Renzi, thank you so much for coming on again. Thank you for having me. And congratulations on the fifth thank year you anniversary. So much. Tell me, what are some things that Overcome is doing now as part of this milestone event? Um, that's a great question. So uh, Overcome, the mission uh, that we have at our organization is to raise awareness on ovarian cancer among women worldwide. We also fund research uh, in search of a cure for this dreadly disease. And uh, we also uh, provide financial assistance to underserved ovarian cancer patients. So as far as our fifth year, uh, we have, you know, I feel like we have made great strides in the past five years that we have been in operation. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, the flagship program that we have, Overcare, that we launched in 2014, um, uh, we started with MD Anderson as our own you know, only um, mm -hmm. partner, but in the past three years or so, we have expanded to now about 19 hospitals in wow. six states. So, That's great. Yes, and so um, it, you know there is a need for this kind of support because it's it's a holistic package that we offer to these patients. And you call it Overcare? Yes, we call it Overcare. Overcare is and a the care package for women with ovarian cancer, That's right? exactly right. What, and what, is, what does it include? And it, it has a, a financial grant, it has a gas card, it has a grocery card. And, um, these Very practical. Two thi yes, and these two things are optional, but um, there are several patients that want it. We also have like a spa package that we offer. And uh, one of our advisory board members, she runs an integrative medicine uh, practice. So mm -hmm. she also um, donates an hour of her time to sit with these patients and um, do a health restoration consultation. So, because so many of these women are also caretakers themselves, they have children and families exactly. and they're sick and mm -hmm. they just sort of probably do the minimal whatever they can do to, for their own case right and e without really pampering or taking care of themselves. Yes and, and what we have seen Mary over the years um, since we launched this program mm -hmm. is these patients are you know as it is they're struggling with something as dreadful as, as cancer right. but on top of that they have uh, financial challenges mm -hmm. and so we have had patients that tell us that we couldn't keep doctor's appointments because we had no gas in the car wow. or or we have patients who would say that, you know, I had to choose between buying medicines or stocking the fridge for my children. And of course, they're so, going to go with the food for the so kids. So, exactly. So, they are, it's an everyday struggle for mm -hmm. these patients on top of having the cancer. So what we try to do as an organization is to provide this package. It's a lifestyle package. As you said, it's a care package for these patients. Did so you say that lifetime package? I'm sorry? Uh, it's, oh, it's, it's a one-time package. One it's a one-time one -time right. package. Uh, even though we would love to support these yeah. patients over the course of their journey, yeah. but um, our goal also is to help as many patients as we possibly can. Okay. So um, as of right now, we do offer just a one-time package to these patients. But what we have seen is these patients stay with us, mm -hmm. uh, stay connected with Overcome, and they come to our awareness seminars. They'll come to our luncheons. They stay connected in terms of you know um, keeping their education and their awareness on this on this disease That's great. Um, and uh, supporting and championing overcome. Let's so. take a look at some pictures you brought with you. At, sure. at, uh, look at your activity. These are some patients now? Yes, these are our, our overcare beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. um, they look very happy to get this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Sprint for Life that we um, that MD Anderson hosts mm -hmm. every year and uh, overcome has been a big supporter of this program. And this year we are um, sponsoring 100 survivors for this right. race. Right. With, like, we do research funding, funding research and these funding. are our international outreach efforts that we um, host in Africa. And um, as we, this, these are pictures from Af our Africa grassroots campaigns. What country is there? It's uh, Uganda and uh -huh. then um, Kenya and um, parts of uh, Burkina Faso. So it's truly international. Yes. Do you also help in India too? Yes, we do. Uh -huh. And we also work with uh, their local organizations in India to okay. uh, raise awareness on ovarian cancer. And this is a, is this a fundraiser? This is our awareness. No, this is our awareness educational outreach okay. seminar that we host every year. And this is our research funding. Uh -huh. we, Lindsay, how far away are we from a cure for ovarian cancer? Or I wish I could headway? answer that question for you, yeah. but um, I know that there has been in the last five years, uh, we have made remarkable progress in the treatment side mm -hmm. of ovarian mm -hmm. cancer. And l lots of many, you know, new drugs. There's still no about. screening test though, but right? But yes, there is still no screening test and there is no early detection 
uh, mechanism in place and so a lot of work still needs to be done in the research area and that's mm -hmm. why we love to fund our young investigators that are uh, involved in breakthrough research. And Overcome actually cancer. gives substantial grants. I mean we're not talking a couple hundred bucks. Yes. Are you actually really, what, yes. what are some Between of your Between 25 and $40,000 40, every year is but That's our, one grant, so, you, so someone could do some substantial research with that. Right? Yes, we, we have done both things. We have actually done like funding for one particular individual. Uh -huh. uh, we have also spread the funding over two or three young investigators who are just about, you know, um, getting uh, entrenched in the in the research so what that helps with we have seen is these young investigators and researchers are so enthusiastic about finding mm -hmm. um, finding a cure for ovarian cancer it just energizes them and so we feel like you know it's a very worthwhile investment on our end. It's a motivator So this you, year right? in 2017 we actually um, sponsored three uh, young investigator research grants. And where do you find them? Do you just go through like MD Anderson or different? Um... No, we work with uh, an organization called Foundation for Women's Cancer. They're uh -huh. based out of Chicago. Very and nice. so we work with them in identifying uh, these uh, investigators. And this, this year our prize winners, uh, they are from um, Memorial Sloan Kettering mm -hmm. and they are also from UVA. Now will um, they be honored at UAB, the... Sorry. Uh, that's okay. Will they be honored at the upcoming yes, gala? Yes, they're going to be yes. at the gala. Uh -huh. And so uh, this would give us uh, an opportunity to mingle with them and also for the audience to see who our researchers are. And that's May 13th? Are. May 13th okay. is our gala. And we also have Shannon Miller, who is our um, guest uh, keynote uh, speaker and guest of honor. Is everyone invited to come and attend and help support this? Event? Absolutely. I mean, we would love the support of the community to come out to the gala and support and um, have a fabulous time. And, in, and you in, have your silent auction. We have right. silent auction. Yeah. We have all the all the fun and fabulousness of a gala that you can uh, that you can expect. And it's all so on your website. Overcome. Yes, the tickets are already um, o -V -A -R -C -O -N. on our website. O -V -A -R -C -O -N. Dot org. Yes. Now let's talk about the symptoms of cancer because women really need to be aware of what are the symptoms of this sort of silent disease, mm -hmm. right? Until it's too late. Tell me about that. That's again a very difficult. Um, difficult thing t for, for women because the symptoms of ovarian cancer uh, tend to be very vague and mm -hmm. nonspecific. Mm -hmm. Like you might have bloating, indigestion, just you know some pelvic pain. But we as women experience that regularly or irregularly yeah. over time. So I mean, we tend to ignore those right. symptoms. But the things to watch out for is if the symptom persists over the period of two to three weeks and uh, it doesn't go away. I mean, it's time for you to talk to your... So, uh, if you feel doctor. bloated for three weeks, it's not just you overate something. It's probably, it could be, could be something else. Go to your doctor. Exactly. And especially if it's, uh, if it comes with some d discomfort, you know, mm -hmm. pelvic pain and you're just not feeling right. I mean, mm -hmm. we have our survivors constantly talk to our audience about, you know, just listen to your body. If, mm -hmm. it, if it says something is wrong, get it checked, double checked, triple checked, because oftentimes with ovarian cancer, it happens that when you go to your frontline physician, they will not be able to detect it and they will just say that is because of some GI symptoms that's you know but if you know your body well persist on getting a scan or a test or something okay done so, so let's say you have these symptoms and you're not feeling great but there's no test for ovarian cancer right or can they do something you are right and so when you go for a well woman exam every year you get tested for cervical right. you get tested for right. uh, breast cancer but you do not get tested for ovarian because there is no screening however um, if you do go to your physician after two, three weeks of persistent bloating and, and indigestion and uh, pelvic discomfort, and if they find that you have ovarian cancer, chances are that you are detected early. And like you mentioned, majority of the cases, the cancer is detected at stage three or beyond just because the sim symptoms are so, big. But right. if it is caught early, the survival, five-year survival rate is actually greater than 95%. That's encouraging. So even if you have ovarian cancer, if it is detected early and you um, you go to your doctor and it gets uh, diagnosed um, before, it, like stage two, right. then your chances of survival is But is how do they so detect it better. if there's no test, there's no screening test, but they can also, if you have all these symptoms, they can give you like a CA-125 or something to figure out this is yeah, high. Yeah, so, so when... So in, in this case, you already have the ovarian cancer, okay. right? But you, it's so in you say, early I stages. So I might have something, check it. So, yeah. yeah, so it's in early stages. So that gives you a fighting chance, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a chance for 95% or higher chances of survival, which compared to the other cases where majority of women present with an advanced disease, I mean, the five-year survival rate is very, very dismal. 
Okay. So. so the message to all women out there is listen to your body, know the symptoms. Yes. If something persists for three weeks, go check it. Exactly. It's not a death sentence. It's actually good news because if you detect it early, 95% survival rate. That's exactly right. Great. Runzi Sen, thank you so much. Thank you. For